Hi everyone, welcome to the live series interview. These are our ongoing live series teaching we have here at Wabam Harpenden. My name is Sion and I'm from Canada. My name is Giovanni and I am from Brazil. And if you have not watched this, you can find these teachings and the interviews at YWAM Harpenden Facebook page, YouTube and podcast. Today we are so excited to have with us Dr. John Peachy talking to us about the Holy Spirit. Dr. John Peachy, welcome. <laughs> As, as you know, I introduced you as Dr. John Peachy. So if you don't mind telling us and the viewers what your doctrine is on and just a bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So that was a very recent change. I just did my PhD Viva in February and was awarded in March of this year, 2020. Wow, so nice. yeah, it's a uh, kind of a change. I'm not sure if I've changed, certainly through the years, but uh, I've changed and well, the doctorate is in education, and especially I looked at how um, character is developed, how, how virtue is formed. Wow, it's amazing. So great. Yeah, thanks for sharing a little bit and just to get to know a little bit more. And today we are speaking a little bit more on the topic of the Holy Spirit, which mm -hmm. is such a great topic to speak on. And I think we can speak this for hours and hours, but we only have 30 minutes today. And I think one of the things that we normally hear is that the Holy Spirit work through us, He works uh, among us. But what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Well, that'll take longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> I'll give you a short answer. Thank you. I think, first of all, the Holy Spirit is always um, at work, um, whether you're a believer or not a believer. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit, I believe, is reaching out to reveal who Jesus Christ is to the world. Yeah. And he does that often through people, but also through things even like dreams or visions, uh, something people have read, and it can stir maybe a conviction that there's something more, mm -hmm. maybe a conviction of sin, the way I'm living isn't quite right, a uh, conviction of who Jesus really is. And the Holy Spirit is drawing people towards, towards Jesus. So part of his work is really what I would call the work of a missionary God. God is a God of missions, and he's drawing people to himself. But also, in the life of a believer, the Holy Spirit is actually the way that we come alive in our spirits to God. And oh, okay. that fellowship, that communion with God is restored because by the Holy Spirit, the love of God is poured out in our hearts and the life of Jesus begins to grow and be formed in us. And then he's also really important in our ongoing growth and relationship. Yes, of course, absolutely important to know that God is our Father, that he loves us, and the Spirit cries, Abba, or Daddy, Father. Um, but also really to give us the power to live in a ways that are following Jesus, to live in ways that we keep growing and maturing, and he does a lot more, but um, those are a few of the, yeah. the things that his work is. So like hearing you, you've had like quite the journey with the Holy Spirit. How has the Holy Spirit worked in your life? Yeah, um, so many ways. I think, um, although I wasn't aware of it, even for me in being in my mother's womb. Now that might surprise you or something, but it says that... Um, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. He leapt when, when Elizabeth met Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, and so there's an aspect of my own mother dedicating me to the Lord the first time. I was the oldest of six kids. So she kind of dedicated her firstborn wow. to the Lord. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I'm not sure what all that means. And she didn't tell me until I was a young adult. I, th I can't remember. I was... 18 or 21, she told me that, so she never told me. But then also, I think in bringing me to being born again, the Holy Spirit, we're born again by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. I was a child, I was six years old. And uh, uh, then also for me, even in my sense of calling into come and do a, a DTS, a discipleship training school with YWAM, I was a young man at university, I just finished um, three years of pre-med studies, mm -hmm. and there was a longing in me for something more. Um, I, w I would have described it as 
Are there people in the world who are living more like the book of Acts? And I think the Holy Spirit puts desires like that into our hearts. And then asking him where to go, um, I felt prompted to come to England. And that changed the course of my life. And sometimes it's very dramatic changes. So sometimes I can remember after I did DTS and I'd worked in uh, Thailand in the refugee camps. One time I was having a quiet time and I had a really tough time. I'd said to the Lord, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to keep on going. You know, I, will not, I wasn't really, I was struggling. Let's just put yeah. it that way. And I think the Holy Spirit meets us in our struggles. And I sort of cried out to him and I asked, what should I do? And three things came to my, my mind. One was, could I read a verse of scripture in the morning and think about it through the day? I was to write to a friend and ask them to pray for me, and they did. And I told my youth group, I'm really struggling, and would you pray for me? I'm not doing well. Mm -hmm. And it was just maybe about three or four weeks after that, things started to get, and in one quiet time, I felt like I heard the Holy Spirit say, John, you're going to get a call from England this week. I want you to accept. So I thought, well, that will be very easy guidance, Holy Spirit. Um, either you get a call or you don't. And yeah. if you get one, <laughs> you say yes. So sometimes it's been dramatic like that, but sometimes it's much more in the ordinary things, God, I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me. Because like I've, for myself, like I've had, like similar, like when I was praying to see whether or not I'm to come to England to mm -hmm. do um, my DTS. And I felt this like nudge, like nudging, like, okay, it was between England and Spain. And it was always right. like, England, England. Yeah. And so sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm, am I hearing God? Is this Holy Spirit? Like, I just wasn't sure. So sometimes I'm not sure, like, if it's the, I know that they're all three in one, but like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, okay, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit or God? Do you, you know, do you understand my question? Yeah, and, and that's probably a, a tough one because understanding the Trinity is just really challenging yeah. because all three are God yeah. and yet they're not exactly the same and yet they're one and and I think I said in my teaching and I wholly agree with this their character is completely the same so when we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit being love joy peace that's what the Father is like that's what Jesus is like so if you see Jesus you've seen the Father you know what the Father is like you know what the Holy Spirit is like but it seems in the revelation of who God is in Scripture um, they do have different functions, and I have actually tried to relate, of course, to God as God as one, but also to relate in slightly different ways yeah. to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let me give you an example. But, <laughs> yes. So in, in my own life, I would say the Holy Spirit has often been, in my experience, sort of one who prompts me. It might be a little bit of a conviction, ooh, I need to do something, or I shouldn't have done something. And, and I understand that as, as the Holy Spirit. He's, he's everywhere present. He's living in me. And he connects me to the Father through Jesus, through what Jesus has done. So I would probably relate to the Holy Spirit over something like that. Okay. Um, at the same time, a fruit of the Holy Spirit, perhaps, you know, is joy. And it's a little more difficult for me to understand the face of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we use those things of wind and fire and the dove and that sort of thing. But to see the joy on Jesus' face, or even to imagine the joy as my big brother, as saying, oh, John, come on, let's, <laughs> let's have some fun together, let's do this. Then I kind of relate to Jesus in that way. He's also my Savior. He's also my, my Lord. And maybe sometimes with the Father, um, it, for many years for me, it was really understanding how deep the Father's love is for me and almost imagining myself being on his lap, um, him holding me, um, him just it being totally secure and, and peaceful there with the Father. That's beautiful. Uh, snuggled in. So those are some of the ways that I've related maybe differently um but at the same time they're they're one so so it looks different for every person how they relate i to I, yeah i think 
some of it is, but it's not just individualistic. Right. Yeah. There's also revealed in Scripture different functions or roles that okay. the different yeah. members of the Trinity play, really. Yeah. So it's because of Jesus, who is incarnated, that uh, and came and lived amongst us, made our flesh, you know, and this material world... Um, possible for it to be really reconciled and redeemed to the Father and and very valuable. And he's the one who died on the cross. It's not the Holy Spirit who died on the cross. Uh, it's not the Father who died on the cross. It's Jesus. And Jesus as well is the one who was resurrected and ascended. So it's through his work yeah. um, that my salvation is secured. But the Holy Spirit has a role in all of that. And the Father has a role. And it's not like you can just, oh, this is this and that's that. Yeah. And pull it all apart. Whew. Tough one, yeah. Got... No, it's good. It's good. Like you said, I wish we had more than 30 minutes. Yeah. This is... That's really good, yeah. yeah. And I think one of the things that you mentioned was that uh, the Holy Spirit reveals himself to us in our struggles as well. Mm. And I guess that's one of his character is to be uh, peace and bring peace to us into our hearts. And this is like more a personal question. Um, for you, of the characters of the Holy Spirit, which of those has been revealed to you the most? Mm. So of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, it's interesting because in, in one way, I suppose for me, the right answer is love. But love has been for me something I've experienced um, revealed through my parents, uh, through their faithful love. Um, and so sometimes the things you struggle with a little bit more are things that the Holy Spirit will be working more. I would say if people know me, they would say, oh, peace is a strong characteristic. And sometimes that, that peace comes through struggle. You know, I, I can remember, for example, being beat up when I was a young teenager. I think I was 13 at the time. And it's a difficult time to be beat up by oh, two yeah. guys <laughs> you thought were friends in your class. And actually, uh, you know, one of the guys was white and one of the guys was black. And they took me into the locker room and they started punching me and saying, we hate you and, oh. you know, different things. And you know, I won't go into all that they said. But I remember the feeling after that of anger, mm -hmm. revenge, and, and a great deal of creativity of ways that I could get back at them, kill them, get revenge, you know, going in my 13-year-old mind. And um, that's a natural human Response. I was born again, okay? <laughs> but I began to just consider, really, the command of Jesus. And I think that's the whole work of the Holy Spirit, to remind us of what Jesus has taught us and to teach us again. And the command of Jesus is to love your enemies, forgive your enemies. And so I'm struggling because I'm thinking of ways to kill them, but I know I'm supposed to love them. So I started, over a period of time, just to pray out forgiveness and um, not to them, just privately, and struggle, feel angry, but say, I forgive you for beating me up. I forgive you for doing this. And then probably about four weeks later, we were riding the school bus, um, and uh, one of the guys was there in front of me, and I was just sitting there. We weren't sitting on the same seat, but he turned around, and there were tear, big tears in his eyes. And he said, I just hate myself. I just hate the way I am. And I could, it was actually the black guy who said that to me. And I said, you know, hey, you're a really great guy. And I know we've had our tensions, but I've forgiven you. And was able to say something to him. And I was free. And I think the Holy Spirit wants to bring that. And okay, it was a little thing in my life as a 13-year-old, but I think it changed the course of my life. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and for me, because right now this is such an issue. When I went to a majority black high school, yeah. um, I was best friends with a guy two years older than me who was the student body president, and uh, his name was Theophilus. Theophilus, and we had, wow. <laughs> yeah, which is lover of God. Yeah. <laughs> and we had great conversations about all kinds of things, including his um, African-American method of Episcopal Church, which is the name wow. of his church, which I didn't know about before. And... Yeah, I just think 
When the Holy Spirit, and you respond to the Holy Spirit, it opens up opportunities in your life and gifts and pathways that if you don't respond, get closed down. Right. So I, this is a question that I myself used to struggle with. Um, it says in the Bible, it says, eagerly desire spiritual giftings. And I want to know why some people don't practice the giftings or churches. Yeah. So that eagerly desire, I think in my teaching, I actually said it's the same word as lust mm -hmm. after. And that's a pretty strong emotion. I'm sure you've never had that feeling, but, uh, <laughs> but it's a pretty strong <laughs> desire. And so why? I think sometimes it's fear. I think that uh, people have seen excesses by those who are considered to be um, Holy Spirit, charismatic, Pentecostal, whatever. And I was a little bit like that as a teenager, really. That was not my church background. We, of course, like all churches, believe in the Holy Spirit. We yeah. never say that we don't. But my actual experience of the Holy Spirit, um, I would have had maybe much more experience of Jesus and then maybe some of the Father. But my experience was more what you could call Binitarian, too. You know, Father and Jesus, not so much Holy Spirit. Uh, so Trinitarian, to bring the Holy Spirit in, I think is really important that we would, yeah, not have a view that the gifts of the Holy Spirit stopped um, in the time of the apostles. And some people genuinely do believe that, that um, the necessary gifts of the Holy Spirit that are there, whether it's miracles, healings, that was to establish the apostles, to establish the Word of God, and now we don't need that anymore. Right. But if you're in a situation where you're crying out to God for healing, where you're asking God to intervene, where you're praying and interceding. We see how much we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And maybe I learned not to get too um, worried about when it comes in a slightly different package, but where is the Holy Spirit at work in this and what is just a bit of cultural baggage. And mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a lot of cultural baggage. I got turned off by some people who seem to be really pursuing the health and wealth and prosperity uh, and pink Cadillacs and gold chains. And uh, yeah, I wasn't sure I saw the Christ-like character. But then meeting people who are um, full of the Holy Spirit, moving in the Holy Spirit, as well as having godly character as well as having a deep understanding of the father's love and of the scriptures and yeah that impressed me that this isn't just something for 2000 yeah. years ago this is something i need more of now so how can you like encourage someone like me i'm with the whole spiritual giftings like i still like i i think on my i staffed the catholic dts mm -hmm. and we had marriott Lowe on holy spirit <laughs> and she's just like I know you want to speak in tongues, it's in you. And I'm just like, yeah, but it just like I feel uncomfortable. Or, you know, how, what are, how, how can you encourage people like me yeah. to... Okay, first of all, sometimes, and certainly classical Pentecostal theology would say that the gift of speaking in tongues is the sign yeah. of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. I think it's one of the signs, but there are other signs. And I think sometimes people even who don't believe or believe that the, the gifts were stopped, sometimes they're moving in the gifts, they talk it about it as something else. So one guy clearly told me he, he's a cessationist who doesn't believe in the gifts. And he was the leader of another mission organization. And then he started telling me a story of, and I was on the train in London, and I was going, and I just felt like I was supposed to stand up and begin preaching the gospel, and there was one person on that, in that carriage that was going to give their life to the Lord, and this was the problem in their life they needed to hear about. Wow. And he said, I did that. I preached the gospel. I spoke about that problem specifically. He came and said, I'm the one I need to be saved. You know, and he gave his life to the Lord. Mm. And I thought, okay, I just heard what for me I would class as a word of knowledge, right? A, yeah. a something specific problem, yeah. a, a, a prompting from the whole, hearing from the Holy Spirit to get up and preach and that there's somebody on mm. here. And then the work of the Holy Spirit in doing it. And some of those things I would have used in spiritual gifts terminology, but he believed they all stopped. Wow. But the Holy Spirit was still at work, work through him. Yeah. So that doesn't mean that he would have been speaking in tongues or have, you know, exercising all the gifts or necessarily believe in healing. But the Holy Spirit was 
definitely a work in his life. Wow. <laughs> right. I think we got into the question that I have to ask as well, because it's just like you mentioned the, uh, the giftings and you mentioned speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. but what other uh, giftings of the Holy Spirit we, we have? Okay, so um, one would be a word of knowledge. And different ones will have, but I'm talking sort of a bit more the classical Pentecostal charismatic nine, but there's other gifts of the Holy Spirit as well. So a word of knowledge is knowing something about a situation or a person that you couldn't know. You haven't got it through, I read about this or I heard about this. It's like revealed, it comes into your mind. So that was an early experience for me and it happened in intercession. So we were just asked, Asked the Lord where to pray for, anywhere in the world, anything. I had never done it before. I closed my eyes. I had had a, a time of being filled with the Holy Spirit in my own quiet time not long before this happened. But I was not um, familiar with this at all. It was weird. And I said, okay, Lord, is there anything you want to show me? And I saw a letters of fire in a ring and the words of the letters said Burma. So I knew that was a nation. At the time, it's now called Myanmar. And I said, oh, you got a very good imagination, John. You know, letters of fire, dramatic. But they'd said, ask the Lord for more detail. And so I said, Lord, is there anything else you want to show me about this? And then I saw a team carrying backpacks, going through mountains. And I believed in the backpacks were Bibles. And they were going, and there was tribal fighting going on. So that's quite a lot of specific knowledge about a nation I know nothing about. I've never been to, and maybe it was all just my imagination. In fact, when I checked uh, with my leaders, they said, oh, no, there are no mountains in Burma. It's all jungle. So obviously I was wrong. But then I read in Operation World where it says, Burma, a nation surrounded by a ring of mountains. So then I thought, okay, no, I'm not wrong. There are mountains in Burma. God knows what he's yeah, more about the nations than my group much. leaders do. <laughs> and then six months later, we prayed for that for three weeks. Six months later, I was sitting in Thailand and had been working in the refugee camps. And a guy was visiting, talking with uh, one of our staff. And he said, you wouldn't believe we were there carrying these heavy backpacks of Bibles uh, the Buddhist monks just welcomed us into the temple, asked us to share about Jesus. We saw people healed. We saw wow. people set free. Um, it was an amazing time. And there was, you know, fighting going on uh, amongst, between the tribes and the government and things. And I said, when did that happen? And he told me, he said, it was, it was in October. And I said, that's exactly the time we were praying. So that's like a word of knowledge. Often it's related to maybe one specific individual, but it can be a word of knowledge about what's going on so that we can yeah. intercede. Word of wisdom, how to solve a problem that is beyond my human wisdom or resources, and God just gives the yeah. solution. Um, healing, all kinds of healings. It's healings, actually. It's not just only physical healing. There's many types of healing that we need. Um, miracles and... Uh, God does do extraordinary things. And I could tell you those kinds of stories, but uh, we probably don't have time. And we have then, time for one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one from my wife. I think it's a lovely one. Um, she felt in a quiet time reading the scriptures <clears throat> that uh, they had e e experienced a drought in the place where she was. And there hadn't been rain for a long, long time. They were walking miles to go get water. It was in Tanzania. Mm. And she felt the Lord spoke to her. He was going to send rain. So the pastor she was living with in, in the family in Tanzania announced to the church and then the entire village that the white woman <clears throat> has prophesied there will be rain and it will be in three days by Sunday. Okay. So that put a little bit of pressure on, <laughs> on her to begin fasting and praying then because I wasn't sure that she was actually that, she was, did feel that confident. Uh, but she did, and on the third day, uh, she and her friend said, keep looking. There were no clouds in the sky. There was nothing. And suddenly they saw a little cloud, and they just began praying, come, come. And uh, there was a deluge, and everybody was putting out all of their containers to collect water, and mm -hmm. the drought was broken. And you can be sure that the church was completely packed uh, when that, That's beautiful. when that rain came. So, I, I, you know, is that a miracle or a coincidence? I, 
I don't know, but I have seen, we have seen God change things in ways that we just can't wow. explain. It doesn't happen normally. And I feel like we've seen that more frequently. Um, and I think it's because of asking God, coming before God and the Holy Spirit doing things we don't yeah. expect or imagine. Wow. So when we get baptized, so I've been baptized three times. Yes. So wow. I, I'm like, holy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so when we baptize, like we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And my question is, what is the purpose of baptism with the Holy Spirit? So when you say, uh, maybe I shouldn't go into this, but when you say you've been baptized three times, you're talking about some form of water yes, baptism, yes. right? Yeah, when I was a child okay. and then 20 and then okay. just past summer. All right. Well, of course, um, some churches would believe you can only be baptized in water once. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, certainly the word bap baptizo, uh, it can mean to fully immerse like a uh, cloth into a dye, like a cup into wine, um, like actually like a, a ship that drowns at sea. I mean, it, <laughs> it's fully immersed. Now, I'm not saying that's the only way that baptism can take place, okay? okay? I'm not terribly opposed to pouring um, and even sprinkling, but I think there is something powerful about immersion representing dying with Christ and being raised to life again. So in Jesus' baptism himself, um, we see the presence of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove coming and resting on him. We see the Father's voice from heaven. And then again in um, Acts and Paul's teaching as well, he asks them, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you, you know? right. yeah. And some people didn't even know, even though they believe in Jesus and maybe they had the baptism of John, they didn't know about the Holy Spirit. And so Paul, um, Paul prays for them, or we see in the book of Acts, and there is an experiential, um, an experience really, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And in some cases, that's quite dramatic. I, I'm not saying that always it's dramatic, certainly not always in the same way. But I think... As I said in my teaching, I don't fully know whether it's like when you're saved, the pilot light is on. In other words, the flame is going, the gas is burning, but it's not the power boost of whoosh. Yeah. You know, that suddenly things are opened up and there's much more freedom. There's also a question of how much of you does the Holy Spirit have? How much are you responding and yielding to the Holy Spirit in your life? And so I think some of those things are more what is referred to in being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and certainly there was a dramatic change in Peter from that day of Pentecost or earlier on when he's denying Jesus and now he's standing up boldly declaring who Jesus is, not caring in a, it, to a crowd of 3,000 people who get saved. You know, there is a difference in what has happened when he's been baptized Absolutely. in the Holy Spirit on that, that morning. So like I like mentioned, I was baptized three times. Is there a cap how many times you can get baptized? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, some people's like, oh, one time. You're going like, to get me into trouble, Sia. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> okay. My church background is what are called the Anabaptists. Okay. That was not a name they gave themselves. That was uh, what they were called, which simply means rebaptizers. And, of course... Everybody at that time in that part of the world were, um, yeah, Catholic ch Christians in Europe yeah. at the time. And so my ancestors believed that children were not, everybody had to be baptized, first of all. If yeah. you lived in that city, in that, that canton, in that area, you had to be baptized. It wasn't a choice of your parents. Okay. You, you're baptized. And they believed that following Jesus was those who truly um, love Jesus, obey Jesus, that they keep his commands, they follow him, and that it is a choice to show the world, I am a follower of Jesus. So that was adult baptism. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got the third baptism, which I am sure is not the one you got. 
Many of them got the third baptism was that by other believers, then they were drowned because they had um, been rebaptized. So it was a very, um, uh, a very, yeah, they were called heretics for that. And yet, I think there is something powerful. We dedicated our own children. Some children are baptized as well. And, and we dedicated them to say, these children belong to the Lord. They're set apart for the Lord. We know they're yours, Lord, and we will do all that we can to raise them to know you and love you. But that they will have a choice. Yeah. And where, where that sort of decision or choice comes in, and maybe we make more than one choice. I might have made a choice as a six-year-old, but I remember as a, like a, I think about a 14-year-old, or maybe it was 12-year-old, I don't remember. But I, I said, you know, I've never had a chance to enjoy sin. I've always felt guilty and I'm just gonna I'll probably come back to you Lord but I'm just gonna walk away here it was yeah. a conscious conversation I had with the Lord and uh, suddenly I was really popular I was invited to all the right parties I think I was probably 13 or something like that and um, and before I had not been that popular and yet after some time I realized this life is empty and I did really return to the Lord. So I made another choice. And that's probably around the time I was baptized then. And then, you know, am I, am I explaining it? Yeah. I, I, I don't think we should treat baptism as just something like, oh, I had a bad week, so I'm going to get yeah. baptized at all. I agree. But um, I'm not so uptight, whereas some churches would really be concerned. And you need to check out with those who are your spiritual authority you know, kind of what what's right for you. But I come from a long line of Anabaptists. Even I did though too. I was only baptized <laughs> once. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't get you in trouble with that question. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and I think just bringing to a closer, um, I think you mentioned in, in your teachings that um, it is a command to be um, filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So to us, how that looks like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So I think there is a preparation, and that preparation is to come before God in humility and faith. Humility is partly recognizing I need to be cleansed. I need to be renewed. I need you, God. If we don't have any sense of hunger or thirst or need, I don't think we make space. We don't make room for the Holy Spirit. And repentance is one of the things that rekindles my love for God. Because I, I realize I need a Savior. I need Jesus. I, I need the Father's love and forgiveness. And therefore, I'm going to forgive, for example. That might be one thing. I realize I've got you know, just some hardness against this person. I need to forgive them. And it might take keeping on forgiving. But I know that when I choose and make that choice to forgive, when I confess that sin, uh, when I begin to do this, I'm making, um, I don't know, a clean house, a, a more room for the Holy Spirit. And that's one thing. And then I think also in faith to ask, to seek, um, to say, please come and fill me. And to be persistent, not to give up, not to measure it as, oh, did I have a good feeling now? but to trust that as I'm asking, the Holy Spirit is at work and things will change and he will do things and he will prompt me. And as I respond to him, um, then there's more room in my life for him. So I think that's, it was D.L. Moody who said, I have to keep on asking to be filled and refilled because I leak. Mm. And there's some truth in one way in that, that yeah. we kind of do things in our lives that maybe we're not as full of the Holy Spirit. So for me, I try more and more for it to be a daily thing that I remember, please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Is there anything that would hinder yeah. me being refilled, renewed? Wow. That's, uh, you just said like the last bit there, you, it's something that you ask every day, the Holy Spirit to fill you and fill you. And that's, that's something I think that we should all be doing, for, at least for myself. Wow, Dr. John P.G. <laughs> Could stay here for like ever and listen to you. Thank you so much. I think... Yeah, I mean, this is, I feel like, just a little of what the Holy Spirit is all about. And so thank you so much. I feel a lot of information. Um, Can I say one thing? Yes, please do, yes. Um, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will teach you. And the Holy Spirit is our teacher. God the Father teaches His children. Mm -hmm. 
um, Jesus shows us how to live, and the Holy Spirit is really faithful to keep on teaching us because we also forget. We don't just leak. We also forget, and I need to be reminded many times of things and taught new things. Yes, amen. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's been just a great time, and just I, I guess we could go for hours speaking. It's just a topic that you can go hours and hours speaking about Absolutely. it because he's, it's. It's not able to unpack that because it's always revealing to us more and more of who he is. But thank you. It has been a great time. And I think it has been a great time for you guys too. And if you have not watched this yet, you can find this on our YWAM Harpenden Facebook page, YouTube, and podcast. Thank you so much for watching us. Thank you. Bye.